know people who call you a witch you you know that person is very immunocompromised you you, you think i'm vulnerable yes. or you think you're making me feel bad but i feel bad for you you don't know anything because you don't know what, what, what witchcraft is i wish you you knew and people who call themselves witches now those are the ones i respect oh, yeah. because they know what they know energy witchcraft is energy the bible that we have today is called the slave bible it has been translated throughout history to the point it has reached a point where it has no meaning it has its original meaning has been tainted today i want you to look at the bible as a book that was authentic in the beginning but its pages has been scrapped off according to the leadership that we've had over time and the uh, and the uh, narratives that those leaders wanted to push through leaders who wanted to push through the narrative of slavery put in slavery in the bible because they know people trust this thing and if it is in the bible case done you understand you know if you have ever lived with mama kambo you know what what culminates like just not eating enough not being given your clothes to wear sometimes hadi kwenda choni ilikuwa na ibika because siku huyo mama alikuwa ananipatia nguo unaona hizi shati za promo i was a very little girl so shati ya promo ingenifika hadi huku chini ingenitosha kama dress so i had clothes but shati za babangu za promo ndiye alikuwa ananipatia nivae ati nisichafue manguo cuz sijui kufua Hello and a warm welcome to LNS. My name is Lynn Gugi. Now, dear African child, the time has come. The time is here, man. My guest today says it's time for you to rebuild yourself, demystify all the things that you've been taught and start appreciating yourself as the daughter or son of the soil. Her style is beautiful her words are authentic her spirit i can tell you for sure we were aligned from the word go when i gave her a call you would think we've known each other for a long time and i won't lie for you guys i've waited to have her on this set forever so without further ado no i'm gonna let her intro do us yourself but before that wacheni nilipe bills my people please i want to say thank you to my people at elegance for coming through with this white outfit that i love today i tried matching it with the boots i don't know what you guys think but if you love it their contact details are right here on the screen make an order if you can and now without further ado please allow me to let my incredible guest today introduce herself good i feel like i should have come with drums oh, oh my God. good morning <laughs> Good morning. Oh, that's a lot of introduction. <laughs> I know it's about <laughs> Oh, I'm 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 really humbled. Yes. For that I'm I'm really humbled. Thank you so much for that. You know, it takes it takes a queen to recognize a queen. And I've only I'll always believe that. Anybody that recognizes me uh, that much is just because I recognize you that much as well because <gasps> trust me, I love the work that you do. And and Being on this show has always been my dream. Come I've on. watched you and I've always said, "Ah, that's such an amazing show. It's like the Oprah Winfrey of Africa for me." There we go. Yeah. Yes. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like a queen to recognize a queen and yes. I'm, I, I'm really really humbled. Thank you. Other than that, mm-hmm. my name is Vivian Tabu mm-hmm. Okumu. Yeah. AKA Swiri Nyarkano. Yeah. Swiri Nyarkano is my alias. I was given that name by my people back in Kano. And I love it so much because it was a name that was given to me out of the spirits of my village people. It was a name that came authentically to me and that's why I use it yeah. that much. But my baptismal name is Vivian Tabu mm-hmm. Okumu. Yes. And I'm so glad to be here. I'm a history enthusiast and I love to be here to talk to Africans about who they are because it's time. It's, it's time. It's time. Yeah, it's time. Oh, um, can I just start with <laughs> your style because I have some few I mean I'm burning with so many questions right okay. now. Mm-hmm. So can I go? Mm-hmm. Look, I love your outfit. This is you. Mm-hmm. You made this. This is me. This is I made this. I I always make out my outfits ever since I was a <laughs> child. <laughs> I, I I was born of a mother who is a tailor. Yeah. My mom is a tailor. Uh when my mom my mom gave birth to me at 1 am in the morning and then by 6 she was on a sewing machine sewing so sewing machine was the first voices that i, I really was familiar with as a child i, I love that voice because my mom sewed on that manual sewing machine yes, yeah so when i was a child 
I used to take her pieces, the pieces that she would leave aside. And I used to take them to make outfits for myself. Okay. Ever since I was a child, I've always just been <clears throat> close to my mom. Yes. And I love her so much because she was a tailor. Yeah. And I knew it was something that I wanted to do. Even though I was performing so well in high school and also in primary school, and I went to do a totally different course, microbiology and biotechnology in university, I always knew I wanted to see you. So when I cleared campus, I said, you know what? I'm not going to practice microbiology. I'll use the information that I gathered there to maybe understand life in general. It wasn't a bad thing, me studying microbiology. Yeah. But then I've always wanted to, 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 to see you. So sewing comes to me naturally. I studied microbiology, but sewing is something that comes to me naturally. And it's what I love and it's what I would do if there was no payment yes. in, in life. <clears throat> if people were just living without being paid. I would still be a fashion designer. Yeah, I'm yeah. Gonna, you know, I'm gonna come to that uh -huh. because, again, dear African child, yes. we've been taught mm -hmm. there are courses that matter. You want mm -hmm. to be known. Mm -hmm. You come from a family of doctors, mm -hmm. lawyers, surgeons, and there's nothing bad with that. Mm -hmm. But we don't get time to become who we are. But before we even get deeper, because I know we'll get deeper. Mm -hmm. Everything you're wearing mm -hmm. has meaning, right? Yes, now. yes, yes. Where do we start with? your eyes okay so uh, my yes my eyes um i've always gravitated towards um drawing the drawing my eyes using the uh the eyeliner okay it's something that i just loved ever since i saw the trend i just gravitated towards it and i was so excited about it and mm -hmm. i was in campus yes. but then i did not know what it meant i did not know the origin of it i did not know so um I just started applying it but with the time I've, I've i've there's a book i bought okay there's a book i bought that was talking about ancient egypt and ancient kemet and talking about ancient civilizations and ancient cultures and that was where i realized that actually our ancestors the people like i can king tut amun king tut ankamun of, of ancient kemet these people loved the eyeliners. These people used to draw the... Look at ancient Egypt. Yes. The makeup was <laughs> eyeliners. Look at uh, Ethiopia, the Surma tribe. Their makeup... Ancient Africans used to apply makeup to express themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, makeup was used as art. You know, when you look at me, you can tell my identity by the way I draw my eyes. Yes. You know, you can almost tell something about me, but just by looking at me. Yeah. And so when I look at these, me makeup, I don't do makeup to conceal anything. I do makeup to project my okay. inner identity. Yes. You understand? Yeah. Yeah. And so that is where my, my eyes come from. I know there's a, there's a connection between eyeliner and, and the ancient Kemet. Mm. And they used to do this to protect, you know, mm. the, the evil eye, drawing your eye in a certain way, it makes you protect yourself from the evil eye. Really? Yeah. And also wearing contact or, or, or you know, there are some herbs that used to be used in ancient Africa to conceal, you know, the, the eyeball. Because when somebody, the eye is the window to the soul. When somebody looks into your eyes, they can tell what is going on inside because the eye is a projection of what? Is that not just a saying? Inside. Is it not? No, it's a real it's thing. Not. It's a real thing. These sayings, this is what hang on our hanguzi awaku to chezea kayaya za chini kwa chini. They did not lie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> when they were t talking about this thing. Mm. All these sayings that were hang away to, especially ours, leave the European our ancestors alone. Yes. Our ancestors, what everything they said have meaning to them. Mm -hmm. Everything they say have meaning to them. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that is what I, I, I usually follow. I try to live with the tradition of my ancestors because it is in my DNA. Yes. Yeah, so when you look at my eyes, that is what it means. You know, these are expressions, you know, of me. It is so personal to me. Everyone can express themselves the way they also want. Yeah. I, when you look at my necklace and my... Earring. Earring on this side, this is a, the cowrie shells. From, from the lake. So yes. we know African tradition and cowrie shells. It's a symbol of, you know, uh, abundance and everything. Uh, this is nature. This is natural. It, it, it was made natural. And then yes. when you look at my feathers and my earring, it has the evil eye in it. Yes. Evil eye, the combination of these colors, the combination of the colors of the evil eye have the ability to protect. Color has frequency. Even this color, yellow, red, white, each and every color has its own vibration. And when you study yeah, to color... Me. When, when you said it like yellow, yellow yes. has its own vibration. Yeah. It vibrates in its own level. Mm. The same way water has its own vibration. Yes. The same way we human beings have our own vibration. Mm. You vibrate at your own level. I vibrate at my own level. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So everything has its own vibration. And some vibrations are protective. 
you know, some vibrations are attracting the same way if white attracts and then some vibrations block. Mm. What is the evil eye? In Luo tradition, when you're born, when you're a child, all Luos that I know, the ones who grew up in, with our tradition, there's something called saro, sero or saro. Mm. You, you get cut on your yes. stomach. yes to keep the evil eye away. So there are herbs in Africa that you can use to keep the evil eye away. There are colors in Africa that you can use to keep the evil eye away. Mm -hmm. And evil eye is basically envy. Envy can affect anyone. We are all energy. When somebody is looking at you in an envious way, if there's somebody who is vibrating higher than you, they look at you in an envious way, it can affect you, it can throw your own energies off balance. Mm. When they, you know, words and intention. Intention is what births when you have an intention, okay? I intend to be successful. I intend to have a child. I intend to have a car. I intend to build a house. Intention is what get, the, get things from the spiritual realm yeah. into this physical realm. Yeah. So when somebody intends, they look at you, Lynn Gugi, you have such a beautiful show. I want to have such a show. Somebody can, when they're coming from a point of, of evil eye, you know, then it can affect you. It can throw you off balance. Mm. It has the ability to throw you off balance. It pays your earrings. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? Yeah. So when, when, when you do these things, and it, it, it's not just earrings, pekeake, you can even use words to declare, no weapon fashion against, against me shall prosper. Yeah. That is something you can also use to bounce back the yes. evil eye. <laughs> but evil eye is something that everyone has. Mm. It's something like, you know, being a kleptomaniac. Kleptomaniac ni mtumwenya taiba hata kama haitaji. Evil eye is something, people who have evil eye, they come from a, a heart of envy. And they will be envious of you. And when they are strong in that envy, then they can throw you, your, and you've not protected yourself, then they can throw you off balance. It's like a pathogen invading. Pathogens invade bodies that are immunocompromised. Pathogens invade bodies that whose gates are closed. Thieves get enter the gates that are, are open. And, mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. Thieves enter the gates that are open. Even in the spirit realm, envy, if you don't protect yourself, they will enter. Yes. You understand? So it's always good to know, to be in awareness that yes. this is how we live. Mm. There are thieves, there's a possibility of thieves because ukiacha simu yako, ivo, ivo. Itachukuliwa. Mm. Exactly in the spirit realm, it's the same. If you just leave, live your life like that carelessly, without really protecting yourself and being intentional with your energies, then you're opening your windows and mm. your doors mm. for any spirit any to come in yes. and jeopardize And you. jeopardize. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hearings. Uh, yeah. Done. The evil eye. Yes. Now we move to my outfit. outfit. This outfit is, <laughs> I love the African sleeves. And when you look at my fashion, you one thing that you will notice throughout the years as I continue to practice fashion, you will notice sleeves. <laughs> because personally, when I was, even when I was young, even everybody else, when you look at Africans, you, you, there are some funny sleeves that people did not like that our, our, our tailors used to make, you mm, understand? Mm. People, people have never liked you know, the African sleeves and it's because the representation has not been indigenous. Like I, I just represent you vizuri, but now Mimi Nimekunja Sasa could represent now the African sleeves and what they mean and where they come from yes. and how we can use like the African shapes, the mm. shapes of the pumpkins, mm. the shapes of, uh, you know, Aguata, Agulu to create actually the outfits that we wear. Yes. And so personally, when I look, I seek uh, inspiration for, for my outfits, or my fashion, I seek it from nature. Yeah. I learn from nature. Yeah. The shapes that are available in nature are the ones that I, I love to use to yes. also create my outfits. Yeah. And especially the ones that are for, you know, hot couture. Yes. Because to me, nature is the biggest inspiration that we have. Mm. And so the sleeves, yes. this is, this is the signature. The, what does this mean now? The, the, this sleeve so now this interpret this ca comes from like the shape of the pumpkin. Yes. You, see, you see how it is? <laughs> yeah. It comes from the shape of the pumpkin. Yes. And personally, me, I love like uh, African shapes. I, I love uh, shapes in nature. Yeah. You understand? Mm -hmm. I love the shapes in nature. Yes. And so when I, when I create uh, sleeves personally, I love to use the shapes in nature to, yes. to, 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 create, to create sleeves. Yes. Yeah. And so I love pumpkins ni malenge. 
You understand? So when I was creating this particular outfit, the the sleeves, I just wanted it to be so puffed yes. as, as the, the, the pumpkin yeah. itself. Yeah. I Does don't... pumpkin has a meaning in the African yeah. context? Yeah. You know, for me, <laughs> for you, it's like everything. I gotta ask because I am trying to put everything one plus. Has a, yeah, everything has a meaning. Everything, you see, when we talk about as above, so below. As within, so without. It means nothing exists in your outside environment that does not already exist within you. Nothing, literally, literally, nothing exists outside your environment that is not already inside, inside your you. environment. Yeah. So even when you look at the cats, the flies, the trees, the pumpkins, the whatever, everything that exists that we see outside here, it already has a representation inside, no, within they, us. They have cats inside you. Yeah. No, it's not a cat. Yes. A cat no, represents... You, forgive me. <laughs> yeah, I understand. I gotta ask the I questions. I love the like questions that you're asking. Yeah. A cat doesn't represent that you have a cat inside. inside. What does a cat represent in nature? Uh -huh. What does the cat family represent when you look at cats? You look at lions. Please what do they represent? Me. Yeah. Confidence. You look at dogs. What do they represent? Loyalty. You understand? Confidence exists inside of you. Yes. When you fear cats, that's a direct reflection that you have a problem with confidence oh man. when you fear dogs that's a direct reflection that you have a problem with, with loyalty, loyalty. <laughs> <laughs> when you fear when you fear snakes yes that's a that, that, that's a that's a that's a direct reflection yeah. that your kundalini is not aligned you, you don't believe your kundalini the, the spinal cord wait now can i tell you something <laughs> Jokes aside, I fear snakes. Are you saying my spinal cord? <laughs> no, I cannot. It, I cannot. You exist. fear? I fear snakes <laughs> so much. You it, cannot make me look at a snake. And, and, and collective, a lot of collectives fear snakes. Yes. And it's because of our collective brain. Our collective brains believe that when we are sick, we need to go to the hospital to mm. get cured, yeah. right? Our collective brain doesn't believe that you can heal yourself, right? So you, there's no, you, you have to fear snake if you don't believe you can heal yourself. Because the snake is a representation of the spiral, the golden ratio, the way the snake rolls is the golden ratio, meaning life in, in itself is, is in a form of golden ratio, meaning you are the one who's constantly expanding. Unona when you snake in a roll, it expands, it expands, then expand, then I expand. Then I expand. In a manisha, at the other way, my shako, in anza even dogo, you are dealing, you are constantly dealing with the same things, but ziki expand. Wow. In I expand, in I expand. So when you understand that, then you look at the snake and you understand that, it, oh, okay, so it's a representation of the Kundalini awakening, yes. the self healing, the yes. creation of your own reality. Yeah. And the more, you know, when, when you want to heal yourself, there's a reason why in ancient Africa, they used to use snakes in therapy. Animals, actually, generally, animals used to be used in therapy. You understand? When people, when you look at the Bible, people like Akina Joseph were thrown into the, the, the den, of, den lions. of lions. Being thrown into the den of lions, you're thrown into confidence. So that you did not have confidence, now you have to establish it from within yourself and come out and lead people. Now, with your confidence, eat you up. If this, the, the, the lions attack you, will your confidence attack you? Because you know your confidence can attack you. What? Or will, will that confidence attack you? Or will, will, will you learn to reach a point of balance with it so that you come out and you are able to lead in confidence? There we go. Yeah. So when you look at everything that exists outside... It's already... It's already inside. inside. And, every, and every time you see it, you see it in your physical environment, it is there to remind you of something within. I love that. You can, you, you, you will, when you see a snail, it's yes. not a coincidence. When you see flies all over, it's not a coincidence. Seeing bees, birds, it's not a coincidence. These things don't just appear in your reality because, oh, to look at Nayenda Kwasoko, Ata to Pitya Kwalenungugi, no. <laughs> they will yeah. come there yeah. when you need it, when you need an interpretation. Yeah. So when you start looking at life intentionally and being aware that, oh, so everything I interact with, in including human beings, is a reflection of what is within. What is within. Thanks yeah. for breaking that down, because uh, you know, now your hand. My hand has the ankh. This is the symbol of life, the hieroglyphic symbol of life by the Nilo Saharans. Mimi ukinyangalea, like I'm a river lake Niloid, okay? I'm Luo, river lake Niloid. We descended from Sudan, the people who invented hieroglyphic writing. 
the first people to invent writing in the world were Africans, okay? So this was the hieroglyphic symbol of life. Yes. And when I mean hieroglyphic, I mean emoji. This is emoji symbol of life. <laughs> ah. Yeah. Nowadays we call them emojis. You know, yes. you, you text your people with a smiley face, whatever. Yeah. Those were used, that was hieroglyphic in ancient Africa. Yes. You understand? And it was Nairo Sarans that invents, invented it, and this was a symbol of life. Yes. It is a symbol of the conjunct union between the divine feminine and the divine masculine below. You understand? Divine feminine is represented by a circle because women have, have the capability of creating. Okay. Circle means life. And that's why tumbo huwa zina, zinafura. Oh, Anything yeah. swe that swells, it means it is life. Life. Where, where energy goes, grows. Yes. What you dwell on, swells on. Mm -hmm. Everything that swells yeah. means life. So yeah. this swelling is a representation of life. And life, bringing life, creation of life is feminine mm -hmm. it's only feminine stuff that yeah. bring forth life they okay. are the portals mm -hmm. so when you look at this this is the moon yes i'm a feminine person i love the moon because you know our men run with the circle with the cycle of the sun our men men yeah that's yeah. why they 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 have wet dreams every day in the morning okay? break that down for on us. a daily what men have wet dreams on a daily wet dreams is a symbol of re-energizing they get re-energized every day okay Women menstruate once a month. They don't get re-energized every day. Women get re-energized every month. You understand? Men get re-energized every day. Women get re-energized every month. This is the reason why men are very strong in the physical dimension. You, you understand? Now, hold on. Mm -hmm. Pole pole. Mm -hmm. That's very important. Yes. Because it's the truth. Mm. Where does the moon come in? Mm -hmm. So the moon and the sun, when you, when you, when you see... Our galaxy as above, so below again. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> we will go as above. Yes, as above, so below. We had ancestries in Africa, in ancient Africa. We had, we had the people who were called the Niloids, and then we had the Bantus. This is no coincidence. The original people of Africa were the Niloids and the Bantus. You understand? The Niloids were people who walked looking above. Mm -hmm. The Bantus were people who walked. Looking, looking below. below in history they will teach you that the bantus were cultivators Farmers. and the nairos were pastoralists huh. travelers you understand there were travelers who used to travel looking at above the, at the moon at the moon and the sun, sun and the stars yes you understand? And then bantus used to seek their solutions nairos seek their solution from above Bantus. You understand? And the, yeah, from above. Bantu seek their solution from below. And this is why Bantus lived in the highlands of the planet. You understand? Bantus were people who lived in the places that were grew natural spices, skuma, mkonayo, tukila mahali, migro pekeake, nyanya, whatever. All your foods, all your solutions were from below. Mm. Now, the river lake never seek their solution from above. Yes. That is why they used to know. They studied the stars. They studied the moon. They studied the sun. So as above, so below. Well, can I ask you, mm. is this what we've termed modern day witchcraft? Because yes. <laughs> in Africa, we've been told uh, our ancestors were able uh, to tell you when it's going to rain. Yes. And it will rain. Yes. Are they also able to stop rain? Now, uh, let me tell you. Afri you know, nature is constantly moving by itself. Yes. Now, Africans studied nature. I want you to look at it this way. Imagine, go back in time. Go back in time. When you go back in time, people are very few. Probably, watu kidogo. And even in ancient Africa, talk to your grandmothers. They will yeah. tell you, homesteads were like from there, 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 there. Like people were scattered all over. Yes. Now, the only way people had to seek information was through nature itself. And this is why Africans started inventing watch, the watch clock, the, the, the shadow clock. Shadow clock that they start, started counting with time. That is when they started inventing numerology. After inventing numerology, now they invent astrology. Yes. You understand? Astrology is a condensed version of numerology. Mm. And then they, they, they went and went and they discovered these things and they realized that this is actually how the life works. It starts from here at Samoja, when the sun starts. You understand? Sun, ikikuja samoja, this, the sun is very, the energy. As above, so below. The energy mm. of the sun, when you inakuja, in effect, kila mtu. It doesn't matter whether you're a pagan, a Muslim, a Christian, or whatever. When the sun starts, it affects you. And when the sun goes, it affects you. What is the sun? Sun is energy of life. When life starts, it affects you. And everybody starts equally the same at the mm. same time. Mm. And it brings with it the seasons. 
You understand? And so this is what Africans knew. Even our seasons, we would predict rain because while well, study, if you can study the stars, they already they always align before everything else happened, even before you were born. Wewe ukizaliwa stars kuna venyewali align. That's what is called birth chart. There's a way in which the stars align and then so now your sun was in, your sun is in what? The zodiac sign, horoscope. Mm -hmm. You find that your sun is in Aquarius, your moon is in Sagittarius, uh, the, the, the ascendant was in, Ju, nini, the, the Ju, Jupiter was in another sign. You know, different houses, different signs. You mm -hmm. find that when you were born, there was a way in which the stars were aligned. aligned. Because everything is constantly moving. The, 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 the earth is rotating. Yes. The, the, the earth is revolving. The sun in itself is rotating, revolving. Everything moves. Nothing stops to wait for anyone. So even when you were born, there was a particular placement that happened above yes. that created the below. Th that is you. As above? So below. So below. And so as, as the stars continue to move the way, from the way you were created, it continues to affect you. We are all affected by the planets. We are all, and you know, human beings, we want to live as though we are not affected by the planets by the planets and the stars, the way they move, but we are affected by the planets and the stars, the way they move. And that is what Africans discovered. You understand? And that is what Africans discovered, and that is what was called astrology. Urogi, orogi, astrology. You understand? The Bantus shorten it. You know, Bantus have a problem mm. with L. Yes. You know? Yes. So over time, ikakuja ikakuwa from astrology to orogi. Ama urogi, ama ushirikina, or whatever. So this studying of energies is what people call witchcraft. And you know, this witchcraft was cut in Africa. It's only Africans that don't practice astrology. Europeans do. Europeans study astrology, they practice astrology, they are card, tarot card readers, they are oracle deck readers, but this information was in Africa. It was Africans that invented it, but then it became illegal for them. in Africa. And it was taken. <laughs> yeah, and it was exported. taken. Exported. And right now, Africans think it is, it is very, it is an information that is very foreign. You know, Africans think, hey, astrology, what do you mean? But astrology was discovered in ancient Africa. It was Africans, nini, Bantus, what come up, Bantus, they used to use clock yamaji. You understand? And then CC Nilots, we used to use clock ya shadow because yeah. we are studying yeah. as above. So, so below, below. Yeah. you understand? Yeah. It's, so it's acceptable mm, in Europe, yeah, but in it, outside Africa, mm, but when it comes to Africa, this is which It is not, yeah. When it comes to Africa, astrology is not acceptable and there is a reason for that. Yes. There's a reason. <laughs> <laughs> there's a reason why yeah. astrology is not accepted in, in, in Africa. And let me tell you, when you look at the story of uh, slavery and colonization, there was a whole 500 years People say it's 400 years, but, you know, it was 500 years, a whole 500 years plus that Africans were dealing with slavery and colonization. You understand? Africans were being taken out of outside of the continent, being sold into slavery. And during this time, no Africans were allowed to touch books. No Africans were allowed to know how to read and write. And this happened after a time when African universities, you know, the first, the first ever universities in the world existed in Africa. Really? Af yeah. Timbuktu, oh, from here to Timbuktu. Timbuktu. Timbuktu was the greatest university in Africa that every people, people used to come from all walks of life, from the Greeks, you know, to the Phoenicians. These people used to come to, 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 to Timbuktu to seek knowledge. You understand? People like Akina Pythagoras theorem studied in Africa. People like Akina Thales studied in Africa. Hesoid. Hermes studied in Africa, and these are some of the greatest Greek philosophers. And when you study uh, Greek philosophy, you, you, they are to, you, you're told that Greek are the ancient people. They were the ones who discovered this. Is that a lie? It's a lie! Gre everything that was in Greece, ancient Greek knowledge, all of it, all the, everybody who studied in Africa was the one who took the African knowledge into Egypt. Somebody like Pythagoras, yes. when now uh, European invaded Africa, mm. instead of him supporting Africa, because this is the place that was giving him knowledge, he decided to confiscate African libraries and go start his own university in Athens using African books. You understand? So when Africa was being ransacked clean and books were being banned, philosophers just took what they could 
and took it to their countries and started from there now it seems like the beginning yes. was from Greece is this the part where we say a lot of our artifacts yeah. are in outside africa yeah. stored a lot in of our african uh, international okay. museums yes. like that's how they ended yes. up there yes even ishangobon is currently still in belgium there's so many african artifacts that are still in 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 Europe due to the time that Africa was ransacked yes. now the reason why africans Could do not, not know astrology is because the moment africans will start studying astrology then the map of africa will stop being upside down the moment africans will study start studying astrology they will start referring to time the way africans are supposed to refer to time why are we referring to time as europeans You know, how should we refer to time the way we refer to time in kiswahili in our mother tongue kama ni saa moja ni saa moja kama ni saa mbili ni saa mbili si ati unasema ati ni saa moja na unasema 7 am what is that uh, what's the difference the difference is that when you look at the astrological chart yes the african astrological chart is the one that is following the numerology the ancient numerology you understand when it is saa moja It is Samoja that is where the sun starts. One. Yeah, it is one. Not seven. It is not seven. Because one in astrology, what does one in astrology mean? Because when the, now they tell you one means seven, then you look at the the meaning of one as seven. And seven has its own meaning. Seven has its own vibration. One, one. has its own vibration. One means one means masculine the divine masculine zero means the divine feminine. Yes. And so when you look at the astrology of Africa, one, zero starts from Cancer. Cancer is the divine feminine, the moon. The moon is home in Cancer. So when you look at 000 you realize that this is Cancer, this is the moon, this is the divine feminine and they don't want to tell you. Because now when you start following that, you will realize that women run with the cycle of the moon. Meaning women are supposed to plan themselves monthly. Men are supposed to plan themselves daily. You understand? You look at one one is the divine masculine. One. You understand? Yeah. A, daily. Yeah. That's and, why they and have one wet dreams daily. Yes. One is the divine masculine and one is a representation of Leo. Zero represents Cancer, one represents Leo. When you look at that time, now you look at it with time. What nini zero represent what? Saa 12. Saa 12 huwa inaandikwa 000 mbona? Because it is literally 000 this is where the beginning starts the divine feminine. Yes. You understand? And then you move into one. One now is the divine masculine the alignment you understand that's why you see one 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 when you see zero 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 you 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 know that something is about to start yeah. when you see one 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 you know it's a line yes. when you see two 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 you know when you see three 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 so when you go to two 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 Virgo three 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 it goes to Libra Libra is the balance you always know three 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 balance you understand and now when you look at it like that and then now you come looking at it literally from the way the sun starts to rise the sun starts to rise at what time our ancestors said it gets darker before dawn 11th hour is the darkest hour 11th hour is the darkest hour which gets darker before dawn you understand so, so when does the time begin it gets darker now dawn is coming dawn yes. is 00 you understand and it gets darker at 11 11 11 it gets darker before saa 12 yes. gemini 11 11 the twins and then you go back now to 10 10 the Taurus and then before the Taurus you go back to 999 again mm-hmm. in the middle of the night 999 yeah. satisa ya usiku aris that is when the day breaks at 3 yes aris Sa-tisa. that is when the day breaks yes satisa ya usiku you the day breaks that is when a new beginning starts but when a new beginning starts bado new beginning unajua anga tu new beginning imeanza lakini kuna kuangana ako ka darkest hour so that is even when you look at it literally aris sa sa tisa sa tisa asubuhi aris is when the day starts okay the sun is preparing the sun is still very young you can't see it it's still very young still a boy aris new beginning and then you move to taurus and this is the time when even in the year the day is the same as the year and it's the same as the body mm. The day is the same as the year and it's the same, same as, as the body. body. Break that down for us. Now let me break it down to mm-hmm. you. When I say the day is the same as the year, yes. It is literally the same as the year. When Aries is representation of nine, isn't it? Yes. Satisa. Yes, I mean, day inaanza. Mm-hmm. In ancient Africa, we had seasons now. When do did the farmers take out their bulls to go start nini? 
kuanza ku, 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 kulima kulima when during this time during the arist time and that was march 22nd from march up from march 22nd to april 22nd look at it bantus when do you start taking your bulls out to yeah. to, to nini uh, even nylots when do you start during that time that is the beginning yes a new beginning a new dawn now it's starting now you start preparing yeah. and then as you move forward to torah uh, sa, sa kumi sa kumi as torah you still start preparing you're preparing for your day you understand and then sa kumi na moja it's get darkest that is the darkest hour and then before the, after the darkest hour now starts you move into cancer sa kumi na mbili asubuhi you understand yeah. but now when you follow the european one do you know <laughs> when you follow the european one now they they start telling you that sagittarius is the divine feminine now they start telling you that capricorn is the divine masculine it does it, it is not making sense and this is the reason why africans were excluded from astrology because they knew if africans were to learn astrology then africans would put the, the maps the way they are supposed to be that upside down mentality yes it wouldn't make sense you are saying the map of africa is upside down yes down there we have south africa yes down there, there we have yeah so down there we should have egypt egypt up there we should, should have, have south, south africa. africa as above so below so below and south africa south africa is the cradle you know they tell us that we we migrated when you look at when you turn the map of africa africa is upside down like this they will tell you that you migrated you from congo you you bantu you migrated from congo so you you spread so yeah. i don't know into why it doesn't make sense <laughs> and then they tell us it's you nilois i don't know we, yes. we came from where When you turn the maps upside down you realize that Bantus came from South Africa all the way to Egypt. Nilikwambia Egypt was Nairobi, was like Nairobi. Egypt was like the capital. And w- when you see where Egypt is, you realize that even it was the connection between even Africa and the Middle East. And Africans used to trade with the Middle Easterns a lot. So this was where they converged to do business and to create civil civilization. Mm. But then where this is not where they came from. They came from da nini from South Africa all the way moving up yes. and even us the Nile we followed the Nile kutoka chini East yeah. Africa to kienda juu Are you saying the developments the modernization everything the culture of Egypt should go back to Africa It was Africans elites from each and every community Pyramids ni za kina Africans these pyramids sasa unaona sasa hizi when we live in Nairobi right now I want you to know what Egypt was, what yes. Kemet was. Yes. And the reason why they say Kemet was not black. Mm-hmm. Kemet was black from the very beginning because it was Africans that came from all over, from all walks of Africa that created the civilization that was in Egypt. And the the pioneers were the the, the Nubians, the Nilots, the Nilo-Saharans yes. are the ones who went and created Egypt and that's why you find pyramids are also in Sudan. Pyramids are just not in Egypt. They created the pyramids in in, in Sudan and then they went and created the the, what, the pyramids in yes. in Egypt. Yeah. And p- the pyramid was not a tomb. They teach you in history that the pyramid was just a tomb that was used to bury pharaohs. Pyramid ilikuwa na gold pale juu. Na hiyo gold ilikuwa ina taf- nini pata frequencies as above so below. Hiyo gold ilikuwa ina pata frequencies that kept everybody aligned in Africa. Trust me the pyramids ziko aligned in along the equator and it's not by coincidence that they are it's aligned along It's not a along, mistake. Yeah, it's not by and hiyo gold ndio ilikuwa ya kwanza kutolewa, you know. Hii gold yenye tunasikia in Africa kila mtu anangangania, kila mtu anangangania and Africans we are not even wa- wondering why gold inangangania, you know. Oh, come we are not on even now. wondering. We don't why even gold. care. Yeah, we don't even care. Those are white people problems. Yeah, white people problems, the crystals in Africa. They, literally because they know these crystals they carry energy particular frequencies you understand these crystals that are being taken out of africa they carry particular frequencies and that is something that africans knew and that's why the pyramids had gold on top to to balance the frequencies of yes. the whole mm. continent yeah so, and when they were removed that frequency fell and the truth went underground That is the prophecy that Hesiod and Hermes say the truth went underground. Yes. To be discovered for a future time. For a future it time. wasn't safe during yeah. that time. Yes. You keep saying my ancestors, yes. right? Yes. Uh the biggest conversation I've had especially with Africans is religion, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And the Bible, yes. right? Yes. So you said our ancestors where the Bantus where I come from 
I think we prayed facing the mountain, right? Mm -hmm. Now comes the Bible, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The question, I remember when I put up like, what is that one question I must ask? Mm -hmm. One of it is, mm -hmm. if we had our own gods mm -hmm. that people were praying to, mm -hmm. before the missionaries came, mm -hmm. then the missionaries came mm -hmm. and we were redirected mm -hmm to another God, mm -hmm. according to you, Christianity is what was used to rob Africans of who they really are. Before you even answer, the gods we used to pray before, the ones our ancestors used to pray to mm -hmm. before, mm -hmm. is that the same God but in a different language? Yes! Um, hey. <laughs> Our God, Mbongo, Mbongo Nyakalaga, from the Niloids, so nini na nini, from the Bantus, you know, each, each and everybody, Ngai, whatever, each and everybody, each and every community has a name for their God when you come back to ancient Africa, to, to, when you come back mm. to Saizi, yes. to Africa Saizi. The God is the same, just misrepresented, you know, painted, you understand? But God is the same, even the Bible is an African thing. You huh? know, let me tell you what the Bible is, literally. Let me describe it here today. Yeah. What the Bible is, is a collection of different mythological stories from different indigenous communities collected to form one tool of control. It's composed of droplets of truths from each and every community composed to make one big ocean of lies. Huh? You understand? Yeah. It, the it Bible contains, is a lie. It's, it, it contains, the way it is being presented today, it, it contains lies. And the Bible that we have today is called the Slave Bible. It has been translated throughout history to the point it has reached a point where it has no meaning. It has, its original meaning has been tainted. You understand? And that is why there are some books that are not present, like the book of Enoch. There are some books, you know, Mary Magdalene wrote a whole text about Jesus and her relationship with Jesus, it is not there. Women in the Bible are being, you know, the Bible encourages slavery today. You understand? And this is just when I, when you look at the Bible today, I want you to look at the Bible as a book that was authentic in the beginning, but its pages has been scrapped off according to the leaderships that we've had over time and the, uh, and the uh, narratives that those leaders wanted to push through. Leaders who wanted to push through the narrative of slavery put in slavery in the Bible because they know people trust this thing and if it is in the Bible, case done, you understand? People who wanted to, pr to, to push the narrative of racism, they used the Bible to push that narrative because when you look at the Bible, even the map of Africa being upside down now, you start reading the Bible and knowing where the Nile is, how it is flowing, which kingdoms are where, where is Babylon, where is Israel? Israel was invented Jewsy, the, the modern Israel. The modern, when was the modern Israel invented? When has the Bible been in existence? So where is the real Israel? You understand? So these are some of the questions that you need to ask yourself. And when you look at some certain verses in the Bible, like Jeremiah 14, I think, there are some words were metoa. You know, Soma, kuna, kuna words zenye ziko kwa ki, the old King James Version, yenye ina mention at the end, yoyo wame mention black people. And those people were worshipping and they were black. And then when you look at the new living, I don't know, is this yes, in yes. and reason, reason, you find out that, the Bible was talking about black people. When we change, it is just people. When we talk the word black, people. Now, you understand? This is the same, nini, the same trickery that is going on in the Bible. It's the same trickery that is going on in people saying Egypt was white. You understand? You, you keep saying the spiritual journey is not easy. Yes. You don't talk about religion <laughs> at all. Where is the conflict between spirituality and religion? Spirituality is science. You know, science is a white man's way of labeling African spirituality. Because spirituality is natural. You live it whether you, you are aware of it or not. But now, how do you become spiritual? By stepping into the awareness of what is actually going on. And how do you step into the awareness of what is actually going on? By going within, because nothing exists outside that doesn't already exist within. Yes. You understand? So you have to go within for you to look at life actually and see what is actually going on. How but do I they... go within? Uh -huh. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> how do I go? No, just tell How me. do you go within? Yeah. Going within, now let me tell you. Yeah. Now, let me tell you a very How beautiful... did you go within? Yeah. yeah. 
a very beautiful way of mm. going within is by listening to your body. Your body is the perfect road map. Your body is a map. This body that you have, it is a map. And it is always communicating to you. But the religion is now the conflict that tells you not to, to look outside instead of looking within. You understand? When you look within, you will know. Even you will enter into rooms that are dangerous for you and you will feel it. Oh, say that again. You will, yeah. You will, yeah you will interact with people who and are not good for you. And you'll and feel you their will energy. Feel it. And always trust your body because your body will meet somebody for the first time and it will be like, hey, me energy is quite too off. Yeah. And then if you dismiss that, you will be caught unaware with this person because when your body tells you that I energy yake equal to off, stay with that and wait for your body to prove you right. Because your body will prove you right. That person will come and they will do something and you, you will remember that, oh, no wonder when I met them. I, your body is always telling you to me meet Lingugi Leo. Stay aware. How you feel. Your body is the roadmap that is always guiding you. Even in decisions, it will always tell you that, no, that's a wrong decision. Hold on. Uh, when Because this is for me. Sorry, guys. I got to do this for me. It's okay. Because I've been looking for this answer, right? Mm -hmm. So we went to, I told you, we went to Kisumu. Mm -hmm. And uh, this elder uh, spoke about Jogi. Mm -hmm. So I realized I have this like very... Is it like um, gut feeling, mm -hmm. yeah. My intuition, intuition, and something? And feeling. every time I fight it, something catches up with me. Every time I fight my gut feeling, I pay a heavy price for it. How do I separate? Is my body also my gut feeling? Like exactly, oh, okay. your body is the roadmap that you have yeah. to walk this life. When you hear sin, sin in ancient Hebrew means missing a, a mark. mark. There are marks on your path that you follow. It's like playing temple run. Unaona venye hizo coins zinakwanga. Una unapita na coin, una hiyo coin inakwambia those are the marks that you have. Every time you don't listen to your body and you don't choose according to the way your body wants, you're missing a mark. You're sinning. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. And the more you miss marks, you get out of alignment. Unaona temple temple run asipo nini hizo coin ako out of alignment you get out of alignment and these marks are synchronicities you you always hear observe the synchronicities there are synchronicities in your life so when you listen to your body you will know the synchronicities very well sometimes you'll just meet people and you'll be so excited like oh I don't know why I'm excited about this person, but I'm, I'm so excited. And then later on you realize that Kumi, this person will going to play a very huge role in, in your life, life. You understand? And when it happens, you know. So always listening to your body, it will always tell you when, listen, switch off the outside noise. It's so loud. The outside noise is music. You are father. You are mother. mother. You are sister. Let society. Kila mm. mtu nakupigia duru. Fuata hii. Tuende kwa hii. Fuata hii. But now the biggest challenge is, will you stay on your lane? You know, and always make decisions. Mutu wakikuambia ati, oh, tufanya hivi and your gut feeling is telling you no. T say no. People pleasing makes you to stray off your path a lot. And choosing your path, sometimes you will choose your path even when it makes zero sense. Oh. Kuna pesa tu itakuja kwa maisha yako and then you'll feel like, ah, I mean, sijisikina hii aki, sijisikina hii joba, ata kama pesa ni mingi hivyo. Ah, ah, what? You understand? Yeah. Sijisikitu na hivyo, ata kama pesa ni mingi hivyo and then you say no. I don't want. Yeah, I don't want. But people in your life will tell you, ah, hiyo ni job kubo unachaje hivyo and then you start feeling guilty. Hiyo ni D. Hiyo ni D. Unatokea. And then you start being confused, unachagua. And then unachagua and then you find yourself now in a deep and those people will not be there listen and yourself will guide you even when it makes zero sense just listen listen because the, the, there's something called the lady in red the lady in red will always come you know you are the world is very, <laughs> the world is very, the world will always test you yeah you will manifest something and right when it is at the corner there mungu anakutumia ama setani ama whatever you like to call it lady in red anapita pale just before your turning point, there's always a lady in red. Something that is telling you to go back to repeat the cycle that you've just fought so hard to, to come, come out, out of. of. 
exam even inaitwa mercury retrograde ukisikia mercury retrograde jua hiyo ni time ya mtihani exam you understand and literally exam in school si unaletewa vitu zenye ulishasoma yes. wajue do you know it this is exactly the same way that thing that the universe does right when your manifestation iko pale lady in red anatokea hapo exam will you pass it or not your ex calling back <laughs> <laughs> You understand? <laughs> the ex is calling back. Yes. And and all this is happening to stray you from your path. Life ni squid game. Hakuna hakuna feelings by the way. If you walk this life, hautakuwa na feelings mob because unajua tu ni squid game. It's either you stay on that path or you don't. For you to jump a timeline, you have to make a decision. You can't honor oh, the future doesn't exist. What we have is the now. The present. The present moment is what swells. Linguki mimi na wewe tunaweza decide to kaya hapa for one year. Si tunaweza? Yes. Tunaamka tu chai tunakunywa tu tunakaa. That, that is how it will be for for, for, for our own like, year. I feel like I want to sit with you for the whole year. Like I just want to be here the whole year. But, yes. when, if, but when we make a decision, mm. what will change that? Whatever is going on now, when you make a decision to, to do end the show, different. Yes. Yes. So the, it is always the moda, the, the the now that is swelling. Yeah. There's no tomorrow. It's always the now that is swelling. So remove time. If now is not swelling, you are not wow. moving. If the now is not swelling you are not moving at all at all at all at all at all and that is what people should always know and that is what religion is not teaching so when i talk to you about spirituality i'm saying spirituality is natural the natural ways in which things occur and then religion is a curated if today I, i i had a job a job offer two job offers and i decide to go with this and not that I've still ja- I've moved from that real there's a reality you're moving from. Yes. You understand? So every time you're making a decision you're jumping yeah. a partic- from a particular timeline into another reality. Yes. And the more realities you jump into the more successful you become. Yeah. It has nothing to do with age. Life as everything the more you, realities. Yes, you shift the more successful, more successful you, you, become, you become. The quicker you move. You move very quick when you are making decisions. You understand because there is change in decision. You understand? There are people who somebody will live one year 30 times and there's somebody who will live 30 different years. Those people are not the same. They are not even the, at the same place in life. Yeah. There are people who are scared to make decisions. Mm. There are people who they avoid making decisions. They avoid dealing with making decisions. But mm. you know whenever you avoid making decisions, you're avoiding jumping time lines. Yes. You're stuck. You're stuck. You're stuck in t- yesterday. Yeah. You're stuck you are, you will be stuck in yesterday as everybody else is moving. Mm. So sp- spirituality yeah. is me looking within. Religion is what I'm being forced to. You looking out. Religion ni unaangalia nje ndio you apply ndani. Spirituality is unaangalia ndani ndio una apply nje. Very easy. Very yeah, it's very easy, easy and very very different. Yes. Yeah, so mm. that is the only difference because spirit nini religion is following a certain curated kuna kuna venye ime curatedwa na human beings so there is a already an outcome yenye watu wanajua wanajua yeah but then when it comes to spirituality now you're creating your own reality hakuna mm-hmm. mtu anajua outcome yenye inaenda kukuja yeah i used to live in a house that was very difficult to access from the road and i felt like it was so difficult to access for real for real for real this was a direct reflection of how inaccessible i was as a person oh, yeah. Every, where you live hata kwenye unaishi sasa hizi kama if this is your neighborhood mm. just look at what is going on outside if you are lost look at everything that is going on outside it will tell you the relationship that you have with yourself if you feel like your home is too inaccessible it means that you are not are not accessible to the universe for the universe to use everything is constantly wow. a, 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 a reflection and i was inaccessible for real for the universe not to use properly barabara yangu ilikuwa ng'a check 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 kuingia hadi nini uba used to complain and everything but then i knew you know i got to a realization that wow. this is what i'm so i moved so easy i live like barabara ndo ina mimi wow. niko hapa <laughs> na unaona only ni access <laughs> <laughs> it is it is we have it we have solutions everywhere if you can't look if within looking within is so foggy like kuna fog mob look outside look outside 
the, the system of education that was introduced let's talk the, about education yeah the system of education that was introduced by the white man was devised to be against a black child and if you are a black child and you're still passing in that system pat yourself in the back because you are very excellent you're, you're beyond excellent because this system was devised to fail a black child and this is the reason to keep your mentality down for you to look down on yourself because now if you can't pass through this system then it means you're a stupid person and a lot of black people consider themselves stupid because they failed an 844 system you know judging a fish using its ability to climb a tree it's impossible it will not climb mm. you understand so most of the time when you look at these things you realize that there's a mentality being driven a mentality that you that is processing you you are raw you're born into this planet raw you fall in raw like raw sugar cane but there's a process that has been carefully devised to turn you into sugar mm. process everybody else so that everybody else looks uniform mm. why is everybody else being made, made to look uniform for for us to be make good workers for capitalism yeah. so that certain few people can continue reaping off of what everybody else should be should enjoying. be yes before we even started <laughs> we were talking about clothes mm -hmm. and what they mean yes and you said kitambo what we wore mm. was very significant yes now we are wearing polos <laughs> <laughs> nikes adidas all those things and you are like you could easily tell mm. this child was from mm. this region by the way mm. talk to me about that when when you talk about dress code africans are people and you will see it even as life continues to unfold you'll realize that africans are people who just don't do things for the sake of it there's a significance in ancient africa we did things according to nature we lived one on one with nature you understand so even initiations you've had in ancient africa we had stuff like age group age set you know you've heard about it yeah and then when when, when they are teaching you about age groups they will teach you what you know africans who are divided into these groups uh, so according to age and they don't they sh explain it a very shallow way you cannot even understand what an age group was age groups were zodiac signs you understand zodiac signs were being grouped according to how which date were you born? You understand? Which date were you born? What were your planetary al al alignments? And you know, easy zodiac signs, they can tell your, your strength and your weaknesses. So when you hear age group and age sets in ancient Africa, go research more about it and know what it was all about. Because age groups and age sets came about as zodiac signs. People were grouped according to the alignment of the stars when they were born you understand and so from this this is already a significance when you're born here you are a pisces you're grouped with other pisces not ne necessarily with other pisces but you're grouped according to your strength yes you understand these ones are grouped like this they did not group people according to this one wavulana was chana roles were contributed in ancient african society according to age sets and age groups and these age sets and age groups were zodiac signs. And once you belonged to one age group, that was your age group throughout your life. Still, generations. Nowadays, we call them millennials, Gen Z. These are things that were in ancient yes. Africa. And so, when you looked at an African child from the Himba, today we have Himba. Go check out Himba tribe. They've retained. Go check out Maasai. In ancient Africa, when you look at a Himba child, or a child from the Luo, or a child from the Agikuyu tribe, or a child from the Luya tribe, you would tell that this child is from Luya. You would tell that this child is from Luya, from this clan, and they, they are this identity. Old, years old. Identity was displayed by... There was no hiding. There was no hiding. You would, uh, your identity was displayed by just somebody looking at you, and they would already know everything about you. And you would also look at yourself, and you'd say that, yes, this is who... I am and this is where I come from and you would mm. feel a sense of belonging to it. Mm. But today, when you look at the, the how the European styles develop, how their styles that we use today develop, it, it, it came from sports. During the time when slavery and colonization was occurring, a lot of Africans were being transported to Europe. When, imagine the roles were reversed. 
wazungu wanakuja tu hapa nyinyi wewe kazi yako ni kukaa tu kwa our highlands yes ranches yes they come if if nini black people are going to europe to to be slaves and then they come here for comfort and then they come here for comfort and even in their homes now they do not have work to do anymore a slave would wash you would even wash you some white people are very were very arrogant even their slaves would even wash them you understand so they had a lot of free time when when you have slaves everywhere you have a lot of free time and that is how they started developing their fashion so when you look at the fashion we wear today unajivunia sana you know some universities hadi wanajivunia sana but when you look at the, the 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 history of it and how you contributed towards that style then you realize that oh you're mocking yourself you're mocking yourself because you let go of your identity your languages You know, you, you let go of your everything African only for you to adopt something that was that grew out of your own pain and suffering. Even today in Africa you find people restricting Africans from being Africans. Yeah. Dreadlocks are just Dreadlocks. accepted the other day. You understand? Kujidharau. Kujidharau and and you let somebody else play their own narrative as you you're shrinking yourself. To, to 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 give them way you understand so that is what happened and when you look at african uh, this is why we we are trying so hard to awaken the african style because it was so wonderful mm. it was beautiful so brilliant so colorful and they know it and you guys when when we are allowed now to display it you will see you will ask yourself like why were we not doing this because africans perceive color differently Africans even our taste buds are different. We have to agree. We have to agree that we are a different people and we've not been expressing ourselves the way they, we mm, are. Mm. We've been expressing ourselves the way Europeans are. Mm-hmm. That's why even hair, you find we have a lot of chemicals breaking our hair. We are trying to make our hair straight as Europeans. You don't know that your hair is supposed to resume its own natural form. Because when it resumes its natural form, the corporate say that it is indecent. It looks dirty or whatever. Shaggy. Yeah, there's just a lot of things that we need to accept about ourselves. Yes, that shagginess is ours. Mm. When your when your hair is left to take its natural yeah. form, it will become shaggy. Mm. And it's, it's there for a reason. It's like having this tree. The, there's a tree that has uh, leaves that are very straight and then there are trees that have leaves that are very mm. kinky. Mm. You can't do anything about it. You can't start telling the le- the tree that has Let leaves that are dry yeah. Leaves. Let me blow dry you so that you look a little bit presentable. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. That is what we are doing as Africans when we, we we reject our own ways and we adopt other people's ways. That is what we are, you're doing. Mm. You're a fish trying to climb trees because yes. everybody else is, is, the, climbing, is ca- trees. climbing trees. What part of the religion that we've been exposed to as Africans mm. annoys you? The part of the religion that been, we've been exposed to as Africans that annoys me is we've been exposed only to one side. Religion for it to be balanced, you have to bring the left and the right. Amen. You understand? Amen. Ah. <laughs> you understand? Amen. Ra. This this was our way. This was this was bringing the left amen. and the right and amen and we still do it up to today but say, very say, say, ignorant. Uh, say not Amina, you saying something else. Amen. Ra. Amen. Ra. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> this doing this, we still do it up to today but very ignorantly. We don't know why. We and quickly. Why. Yeah, and very quickly. But it is it has a meaning. Bring the left, bl- bring the right. bring it to balance yin yang balance light dark balance you understand because when you live in the light yin will tell you do not do evil when you live in the right you are not doing evil isn't it yes kuna hii kuna wenye wanafanya evil wewe si haufanyi but kuna wenye wanafanya so for you to re- reach a point of balance you have to be like moses part the red sea and walk in the middle Don't walk in left, don't walk in right, walk inside the middle of yeah. it. Do not do evil, do not accept evil. And for you to not accept evil, you have to do what? Equip yourself in a way that you will not accept evil from anyone. If I am a warrior in the field, you you you, you understand? Yes. I for me to fight, I have to know how to fight. You know we were talking about empaths and you said we think it's cute. <laughs> yeah. Giving is cute. <laughs> yeah. All we do is give give. Yeah. You know, what's the problem with that? Now let me tell you. In the in the universe, yes. The only obligation you have towards the entire universe is the one you owe yourself because you are the universe experiencing itself in human form. You you are the only obligation you have. Everybody is in their lane. And you 
You are the only obligation that you have. The moment you subject yourself to situations that make you feel otherwise, you're sinning. You're missing a mark. The moment you're giving and you, you are going hungry, you're sinning. The moment you are allowing people to step on you and dictate your life, you're sinning. You understand? Every time you subject yourself to situations that you are not aligned with, you're sinning. Because the only obligation you owe the world is the one that you owe yourself. And the more you feel good, that is reflected outside. And the more you feel bad, it's reflected, it's reflected outside. You attract yeah. what you are. You understand? And so when you know that, then you know that that is the religion. This religion that we are being taught today, it tells you turn the other cheek. Only live on the light. Living on the light only is demonic. If you're somebody, you're just living on the light, you have no capacity to defend yourself from a manipulator. Because we have the darkness and we have the light. The people will manipulate. But are you able to allow yourself to be manipulated? For you to not be able to manipulate, you have to learn that this is how manipulation works. Looks like. And this, this is, is how what it looks, it looks like. like. And you recognize it and you say no. But if you cannot, you don't even know what manipulation looks like. Because you, you want to dwell on the light. You want to lead, you are a good person. You call yourself a good person. You're not helping anybody. The only way you help the universe is when you don't do evil and you don't accept it as well. Oh. You don't keep quiet in the faces of evil. You do not accept it. And when it comes, you defend yourself ruthlessly against it. If you can't defend yourself from evil, yeah. then you're allowing it to happen. <laughs> you're allowing it to happen into yeah. the world. Yeah. And so that is the religion that should be taught. Do not accept evil and do not do, do it. Evil. In equal measure, if you lean on one other side, you're not doing anything to help the planet or yourself. At all, at all. At all. You're, you're, you're just wasting your space and now you're moving towards disease. Yeah. Because the moment you start doing things that are not good for you, mm -hmm. you stop moving towards ease. You stop moving towards the path of least resistance. Now you start moving towards the path of resistance, yes. the path of disease. And before you know it, you'll be gone back to source. You are gone. You are gone. Thanks for reminding me. Mm. In Africa, mm. we are we have herbs. Yes. Our um, ancestors would use these. You said even like animals, that's therapy. Yes. Herbs was yes. medicine. Yes. Now it's what we call mitinidawa, mm. kwawaganga. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me just ask. Yes. I'm just asking from a place of naivety. Mm -hmm. What happened to our African medicine? When you look at nature, yeah. It still goes back to what is not above cannot exist below. What is not within cannot, cannot exist, exist outside. outside. And so every solution, every solution that you, you, you seek within, even health, it's in the environment. That's why kuna herbs, like, that's why even in, in, in ancient Africa, kulikuwa na seasons, okay? Season ya maembe, ni season ya maembe. Na season ya maembe, inakuja na, si, na maembe because yo maembe ukikula yo season, it will help you. Fight all the diseases that come with that season. Season ya avocado inakusaidia ku fight all. It was natural, you understand? Wow. Because things that are in nature were there to support you. Everything is always working for you. It, nothing is against you. So when we started now going against that, now maembe tu zinapandwa, GMO, GMO tu kila mahali, zinakuja any season, we've lost. We're even importing yeah, now. Yeah, we, are, we are even importing now. Eating local is not a thing anymore. Kila mtu anataka kugrasp zenye ziko nje. Forgetting that, okay, nature see. is already working for you here. Nature is already working for you. And so, all, kila kitu yenye iko in nature, kila kitu yenye iko in nature, Africans knew that it was there to help. So there were just people who were researching to know that, oh, this plant is supposed to do this. By just, if you tap into spirituality, you know, you recognize nature. By just knowing that, oh, what traits does this tree present? And then you go look for it. Inside of you, there's that particular trait that matches that, that one of that, of, mm. of that particular tree. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about marijuana, for example. Marijuana, what the, where, where marijuana gets you, that high that you achieve, you can achieve it without marijuana. You understand? These things that we get outside of us, are just there to help 
ignite it to make it easy i can be high without marijuana yes you can tap whatever cbd does whatever cbd taps into you can tap you have that receptor How? you can tap into it when you meditate when you get yourself the more outside noise you shut you because marijuana helps you to shut the outside noise oh. so that you only deal with what is what yes. is within yeah. so when you the more outside noise you can actually shut the outside noise without using marijuana yeah. and actually get yourself to that particular point of highness without using that mm. but things things are in nature to help you if you can't get there now you use the things in nature to get there if you yes. can't heal yourself now you use the things in nature to help, help you to help you set that particular intention and this is how africans used to live kitu kama diabetes was was known in ancient africa aje diabetes africans used to detect diabetes but still using nature everything nature collaborating yes mtu anakuja na kojoa you know nini if ants go to that mkojo they'll know that wameenda hapo because sukari imewaitisha so the sukari hapo oh. yeah i mean <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I got talking of which exactly. <laughs> ah. So, this this things Africans were able they were able to hack the system and they were moving spiritually until Europeans came to start moving the world technically. And so we started moving towards the technology of food and comfort and transport. But Africans were moving with the technology of spirituality to discover the planet. The planet is so huge. It's so big. The, the, this planet is so it's not just us that are here. The same way there was a time white people thought they were there alone and black people thought they were here alone, right? Until we discovered each other. There's still more discovery we need to do and the war is in who is going to make this discovery. So other people are making sure that ukifika kwa finish line umerudishwa nyuma. Ndio wengine go back. Go back. But then what they don't know is nature always takes over. Nature will always take over. There's nothing in this world that you will discover if nature doesn't allow it. There is power in 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 unity of the people. When people get to know that they are related that they are connected with one another, then they start to flow and nature takes over and now nature starts to play its own rhythm. Yes. But in rhythm yenye nature inapaa ku play, ndio some people are against. Because they know that nature is very fair. There's a time to be hunted and, and a, time a time to, to hunt. hunt. And it's time to hunt. Exactly. For what's <laughs> the problem we have with Gen Z mm -hmm. in the African context? Because to us, mm -hmm. this is just a generation that is everywhere, <laughs> but nowhere in particular. <laughs> What what's the problem uh -huh, with Gen Z? Yes. Gen Z are the code breakers. Gen, Gen Z have come here to break a, a particular code. Okay, they are the last generation. They are the last uh, Z generation Z millennials are generation Y and then after millennials we have already generation alpha already being being born and millennials grew up at a time where you were born shule you know you're born kuna shule there was a, a particular path that was defined that millennials followed yes every millennial yes and a lot of millennials followed this path until they reached dead end <laughs> You follow it and you reach like, a no, dead end. I can't. And you're like, ah, you know, ah. See, well, in Yambia, I went to primary, I went to high school, I went to university. Now, doctor, yes. you know. And you, you follow this. You, you, you. The millennials have followed religiously the paths that they were told to follow, even when it comes to marriage and everything. Paths that have been set. And we, we have to admit. A lot of millennials have reached a point where it is dead end, a point of futility. Now you need to go back behind, within. You've looked outside your whole life. Now you're being told go back within because answers are within. Mm. And then there's a generation that is being born looking out in the inside. They don't. They, they, you you give back, and it is millennials that are creating this particular generation yeah this particular avenue this particular space for because millennial mother when you look at a millennial mother right now the way they are raising their children is very different from the way they were raised themselves yes and that that is the change that is occurring and for a change to happen chaos have to occur and this is the reason why you will find that gen z's will make it difficult at the workplace they will make your life difficult at the workplace because they will not take anything and the reason is because they are bringing that 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 they are creating gen z are like john 
creating way for alphas, you know. Au ndio wamezaliwa, ita imenye, confusion is everywhere and people have to, you need, Gen Zs are literally millennials going back within. You understand? Gen Z is like a literal representation of millennials mm. going back within. And when you go back within, it's, the spiritual journey is not nice. Okay? It is dark and it is light. It is not love and light only. You're going to cry. You're going to be tempted. You're going to be, you are going to reach a point where it, you have to trust you whether you like it or not. Mm. Or you press the exit button. Yes. You understand? And this is what a lot of millennials dealt with. But now Gen Zs are coming in now with their eyes turned inside. Mm. Because they're already seeing millennials ile njia yenye watu wanafuata. Kama mtu anakuambia at you forty nje utakuwa na daktari na jobs aziko. Graduates wamekaa hapo nje. Hakuna mtu mwenye akona kazi watu walipata A wanakaa hapa takataka nje hapa. Uta utarudia? No, utarudia. You cannot. You cannot go through the same same path yenye unaona ina lead watu to the tomb. Mm. Yes. We are not here to experience collective experience. Mm. And this is something that Africans need to realize. That experience is unique. It's yours. You might be somebody who is very bright. But you don't want to become a doctor. No. You don't want to, to, to become a lawyer. Yeah. No. You want to dance. Do it with that brain. Take that brain to dancing and see just how much you will do. See just how much dance you will develop. Take that brain into you know, fashion design and just see how much. It's not always that the moment you are intelligent, at now you have to stick to a particular path. You can become successful even by just cleaning people's houses, even if you got an A, if it is something that you are doing from the there bottom of your go. heart. There we go. You said it. That's yeah. just it. If it's something you are doing from the bottom mm. of your heart. Mm. Authenticity. And that is the clash between Gen Z's and millennials. Yes. <laughs> belief wow. systems. Yeah. Our belief systems are very different. Millennials are very scared to let go. Because unajua Gen Z ni mtu mwenye at a let go because they have nothing to lose at the end of the day. Gen Z feel like they don't even want to be here to begin with. Oh no. They feel like they don't even want to be here. And so when you don't want to be somewhere, what are you going to do it? I have a life now. I don't want to be here. Then I'm going to do the best I can to, to make, get out yeah, of here. Or to make this life worth it for me. If it is not worth it for me, then there's no point on, on me. If I'm, I'm, I'm working a job that I don't like, if I'm at a work, toxic work environment, I will not be there. I'd rather go home and live with my parents and live in the village as long as I'm happy and I'm not slaving to, to, to survive. To, to survive. Exactly, but millennials wame raiziwa na hii conservativeness. A millennial wako na woga. That is the clash. Millen, a millennial, you'll find a millennial who is an artist, but anakufa kwa death. Anakufa kwa desk because haezi, haezi <laughs> give up <laughs> your, your salary and you're assured. Because they, they don't want to step into the unknown. And Gen Zs are not scared to step into the unknown. We will go into the unknown and we are ready to deal with the consequences of it. But millennials... It's but should I, and that should is why we are toto wenyu. Wata wapatia mani. Talking like this because you are Gen Z now. <laughs> Let me tell you, your kids, the ki millennials who are having children. Ah, you're, you're not ready for the gen that generation. Millennials who are having children, you're giving back to children who've, who've been here before. They've not been in this particular reality, but they've been, you're, you're, you're giving back to constellations that are repeating themselves. Yeah. And this is the clash Me, now. Yes. Now that, that it's going to be a clash between parents, but it's going to create something beautiful. Beauty. What, what are we creating? <laughs> and give me some good news here. What am I now, creating? Now let me tell you. Unaona itemine. This is a very beautiful time to be alive. Yes. Because this time... Millennials are the ones who are now creating this generation that is going to do the unthinkable, the unexpected, like the things we read in history that happened in history. We are going to be the generation that is, is going to be read about also. You understand the way we read about Akina Queen Nafiti, Queen yes. Sheba, yes. we read about Mansa Musa, we read about, you know, the great people who are... I mean, sometimes you ask yourself like, hey, when these people are tapping into which, now those are the people that are now being created again. People mm -hmm. say, well, there are people who will watch this, they won't understand mm -hmm. your weirdness. <laughs> Some people have seen, she's a, well, she's first a what do you say to people when they call you a witch? So, so, I can be a witch. So, when people call me a witch, because whenever somebody calls me a witch, I just know, 
hata hawajui what is going on and hakuna kitu mbaya kama hiyo you are very vulnerable because let me tell you when, when people call me a witch you know what i see yes you see biology biology talks about the immune system kila mtu akona immune system physically spiritually too as above so below we also have an immune system you understand so people who call you a witch you you know that person is very immunocompromised when, to become immunocompromised is any pathogen can enter into your body and attack you and actually cause mayhem in your life mm -hmm. because your doors are open your gates are open spiritually if your gates are people who don't know what witchcraft is people yes. who don't understand what witchcraft is your gate is open it means that your gate is open mm. you can <laughs> and and it, 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 you are vulnerable you think you you, you think i'm vulnerable yes. or you think you're making me feel bad but i feel bad for you you don't know anything because you don't know what, what, what witchcraft is i wish you you knew and people who call themselves witches now those are the ones i respect uh, yeah. because they know what they know energy witchcraft is energy intention Ona Elin hata wewe mwenyewe umewahi kuwa na I'm sure each and every person kila mtu amewahi kuwa na something that just happens they wished for it to happen and it, and it happened. happened how you understand you call me a witch and you go to school geography teaches you about the tropic of capricorn and the tropic of cancer you know what is it about what is a capricorn what is a cancer what does it mean you call us witches because we, we we use zodiac signs and yet you wake up every day in the morning and the sun is shining oh man the sun is energy the sun is representation of energy yes. and when i tell you i wanted to explain to you the day is the same as the year yeah the day is the same as the year in a sense that when the sun starts the sun is very young at at sa, 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 satisa satisa the same way the sun is very young during uh nini march when the year starts yes. when you look at summer autumn winter yes. all this season when we start to prepare when we start the year when we mm. start to prepare yes. the, 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 the year is very young yeah. now it moves the sun moves until ifike saa sita saa sita ndio 000 hii ndio time yenye kitu inataka kuzaliwa you understand the sun is now reaching its full glory saa sa sita the sun ina kuanga karibu uh, the shadow when you look at your shadow by yeah. then learn with it with the shadow yes saa sita the shadow iko karibu iko almost karibu kukuwa aligned now look at your shadow saa saba it will show you as above so below so below look at your shadow iko hapo when you look at your shadow saa saba it it is aligned alignment leo divine masculine you wow. understand yeah. and that time of the year is now this time august Leo time is August now. This is the time that people are reaping. And when you look look at the, the spiritual people, this is the time that you see a lot of spiritual people are reaping and when you look at even people who plant, this is the time that they harvest. This was aligned. Yes. We are doing this right now. <laughs> exactly. Yes. So when you when you look at the way the year runs, it's the same way the day But runs. But August ni nane, right? Is no. It? August ni nane according to Europeans. When ipeleke pole pole according to Africa. Ona according to Africans I want you to look at hii nini yes. the way sa, sa sita when when sa sita June yeah. six, six minus yeah now when it goes back it doesn't go to eight. it goes back to six. ndio inaishanga 12 inaisha 12 hapo 6 yes. 12 6 12 hapo yeah. and then now you move to one again you understand you also have to know how it it moves as above so below kuna watu wa above na kuna watu wa below that's why tuko na different in time yeah time yenye sana kwa Africa iko Europe na time yenye sana iko Europe iko Africa. Mm. You understand? Mm -hmm. So hiyo ndio above and below. Time yenye ni usiku Africa ni mchana kwingine. Hebu turudi nyuma. Tulikuwa tumeenda pole nime lose track. <laughs> we, were, we were very okay. Yes, venye Satisa, March, September. Yes. Now we have nini Leo, Leo, Leo. season. Yes. I don't even want you to call it nane because yeah. now that is confusing. Yes. Say Leo. Leo. Ita hizi vitu ai inaanza Aries, Aris. inaenda Taurus. <laughs> Ona samoja samoja subuhi inaanza Aries inaenda Taurus inaenda Gemini yeah. inaenda Cancer yeah. inaenda Leo yeah. after Leo Virgo yeah. after Virgo tunaenda below tunaenda kwa Libra then after Libra you go to Scorpio after Scorpio you go to Sagittarius after Sagittarius you go to Capricorn and then after Capricorn you go to Aquarius and yes. then Pisces yes. wako hivyo venye wamepangana yeah. ukianza hii maneno ya mzungu kukwambia sijui January <laughs> Ni 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 wachana nayo hiyo yeah. just put their illusion aside kwanza do people think you are racist 
Uh, that you hate white people. I don't actually hate white people, and white people know I don't hate white people. Yeah. Actually, I even have a lot of white people who follow me. I've dated uh, white people, actually. Yes. I don't hate white people. I hate the mentality that is being fed, that is being driven by a lot of white supremacists. You understand? The confusion forcing Africans to follow their own way when we have our own ways to live. You understand? There's always... Uwezi chukia huyu mtu mwenye anataka ngatu mfanye vitu venye ya anataka. Ye yeah, ataki ufanye vitu venye we unataka. And when I tell you this, it is still the same. Can you stay on your path? Africa did not stay on its path. We were able to be swayed. We did not stay on our path. As an individual, what is going on with us individually is going on with us collectively. So as a continent, when you see that people are not following the paths that they are supposed to stick to, know that it is happening even collectively. Mm. You understand? Mm. It's happening even collectively. Yes. Africa as a continent has not been on its path because to make in a narcissistic relationship with Europe and, and Asia. You understand? To make in a relationship where people just want to take from us and give nothing. And when we want to follow our own way, mtu ataki. Now, your hair. Hey. Let's come back to your crown. <laughs> yes. What does it mean? So my hair, this is, okay, the color choices that I chose for my hair yeah. is very crazy. This color, this was the color of my hair when I was young. Okay, unajunga wale watoto wenye, kuna watoto wenye wakonga na color yi nyuele. Like your hair is not black. Yes, those ones that are called kwashiako kids. Yes. Yeah. Now me, I used to have brown hair, like my hair was brown. To the point, it was almost turning red. So I used to have issues. Nikisoma Kiboro. I went to Kiboro Primary. When I was in Kiboro, I used to be like, the teacher used to get me outside all the time that I'm dirty. You understand? <laughs> because my hair was very brown. My hair used to be very brown. So I wanted to keep hair, but I couldn't in the long run because it was used to, they used to call it dirty. So it gave me a lot of trauma with my hair as I was growing up. Only for me to come and realize there was a time I dyed my hair this color and yeah. it looks really good. So only for me to come and realize that this is actually my natural color. Like I actually look good in it. So my color choices, I, I, I decided to do this color because of that particular experience. I just want to have this color now. Staunchly, you know, because I want to reclaim that I look good in it. Yes. I wish and I knew you do. as a child. And you do. Mm -hmm. Oh, obviously you don't. You don't want telling you. You do. Yes. Yeah, but then and then the color now placement. Yes. Now I I I I move with nature as well as my ancestors as above, so, so below. I want to remind myself. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Please. I want to always mind my, remind when I look into the mirror, that is the philosophy I live by. Yes. As above. So below. So below. Yeah. And and yeah, that is what I decided to do when I... I know I will change it, change it as we go, but for now, this is the meaning of it. This here. Yes. The... The makeup. Here, the white and the three dots. The white. And <laughs> the one between the eyes. <laughs> No, this one, yes. This uh, I like to draw, like most of the time when you find me drawing these um, curves, yeah. uh, there's always like a complete circle or a circle that is, that is not complete. And this circle, when it is not complete, it's either facing above, below, or, or below. east, or west. west. So personally, I love to, to have, you know, this one as a signification of like the moon when it is in a quarter. Yeah. Right now, that is where I am at emotionally. Uh -huh. <laughs> so that yeah. is where I am, I am at emotionally. Like yes. I'm not bleeding. I'm not with the full moon anymore. I've shifted. Yeah. Yes. I was, I, I've been bleeding with the full moon, mm. but I shifted into the, the, the quarter. Yeah. Yeah. So I like to have it. I like to have it uh, as that. Sometimes I have it in full, yes. depending on, on what how, I'm feeling. Where you are. Yeah. Mm. And wow. then, yeah, depending on where I am or yes. what I'm feeling. And yes. then the three, three to me is like the three, three pillars. The six, nine, three, six, nine. Yes. Yeah, the three, six, nine. I, I will create videos about it on yes. my TikTok to yes. explain it. Yes. But it has a very huge significance when it comes to dividing yourself into like small sections of routines. My septum. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we are not letting you go before we get the full okay, so story the, behind the look. Yeah. This septum, the story behind the septum is very funny. Uh, I used to date someone. Yeah. And they they took my freedom. Like, I mean, I've always had an issue with my freedom being taken. 
that is the biggest shadow I've always dealt with in life. Like I've always, when I date people, they always want to own me in some way, in a way that they don't want me to do my own stuff or to make my own decisions. So there was a time I was in a relationship with someone and they, they, they dictated that I will not have any marks on my body. You understand? And that, that relationship in itself, I stayed in it. You understand? I stayed in it because I needed to learn whatever I needed to learn at that particular point. So when I got out of that particular re relationship, wow. I got this because it was a reminder. Like this always reminds me of a time when I couldn't even have a piercing, a, 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 a piercing or a tattoo or anything because somebody was dictating it that I do not have it. I know we started with your look, we're mm -hmm. gonna end with your look. Huh? Your hand, mm -hmm. one more the, the, that this we did lady. not talk about. There's this lady. Wow. Now, you see. That's beautiful. <laughs> this is a, Wait, a Can queen. I see this? Yes, sure. Oh, you can. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Mm -hmm. To me, that, that ring represents divine feminine. It represents the matriarchal power that existed in ancient Africa before yes. the coming of the white man yeah. and before the coming of patriarchy. This, to me, represents like who we were before the invention of women. As I told you, in ancient Africa, we were divided according to age sets and age groups. There was no man, no woman. Yes. So even androgynous women, women who, who are very masculine, existed and nobody cared about it because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, gender was very fluid. Every, you were allowed to identify the way, whichever way you wanted to identify. Because when you look at even the Wudabe men, Wudabe men used to have a lot of makeup and be very feminine. They used to, they took after the tradition of the birds. Mm -hmm. You know, they, were the, they are the ones who now make themselves pretty yeah. for women. Yeah. You understand? And then there were some other cultures who, women were the ones, like the Yoruba, women were the ones who are making themselves pretty for the men. men. It was very diverse in Africa. Everybody had their own culture. So when I wear this particular ring, it reminds me of that. It reminds me of the intactness that I, I would really want for us to get back into. Yes. Yes. Oh, hey, geez. Your shoes. Ah! <laughs> Ay, these shoes have no meaning. Oh. They have no meaning. This no. one is just shoes. This one are just, they have no meaning. No. Nah, these ones uh -huh. are just shoes that I like. They, they look nice. I thought their feather, that cabin, yeah. had a. Uh, sorry, no. you know, when we I see know. greatness, we have to appreciate it. The mm. necklace. I noticed matches the earring. Mm. The necklace is matches the earring. I yeah, think yeah, yeah, yeah. There's something about the earring that is in the necklace, so it signifies the same thing. Yes. The evil eye. Yeah, the evil eye. Yeah. I always have the evil eye. And one thing about the evil eye, if you use the evil eye, when it gets lost or when it gets broken yeah. or when when you can't find it, let it go because it means it has absorbed what enough it energy. To. Or the person who is going to find it needs the protection yeah. more than you do. So yeah. whenever you lose your evil eye, just know on this planet, nothing gets lost. Things just get recycled. You are so woke. <laughs> but there must have been a point that led you yeah. to this yeah. place right now. What was your breaking point? So Mimi, like the fact that I'm called Tabu, my name is Vivian Tabu. Uh, so I've always known Okay, no, not always really known. Yes. I was born, when, when my mother gave birth, I've always listened to the stories my mom tell me yeah. about us. So my mom kept saying that she, her life was just going on well when she had all the, the other kids, you understand? And then when she gave birth to me, it was hell on earth for her. Like the moment she gave birth, Adi, she had to name me Tabu. She says it, like I named you Tabu because I did not know what was going on. Tabu is trouble. Yeah, like she went through a lot of problems when she gave birth to me. I told yes. you she gave birth to me at 1 a.m. And by by, six. by by six, she was sewing. My dad was a drunk by then. My mom is the one who used to sew. Babam wa ndia wuzen ya lete pesa. You understand? So things were just so difficult for her when she when 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 she gave birth to me. My childhood, when you me I've been through. <laughs> like for for example, when I was born, when I was very young, my mom left me. Because my dad married another woman, and so she left. Out of all the kids, I was the one who was left to live with this woman and my father. And my mom went with the other kids. You understand? So throughout that time, I went. I went through a lot of Mama Wakambo stuff. You know, just going. You know, if you have le ever lived with Mama Wakambo, you know what what culminates. Like just not eating enough, 
not being given your clothes to wear sometimes hadi kwenda choni ilikuwa naibika because siku huyo mama alikuwa anga ananipatia nguo unaona hizi shati za promo i was a very little girl so shati ya promo ingenifika hadi huku chini ingenitosha kama dress so i had clothes but shati za babangu za promo ndiye alikuwa anga ananipatia nivae at nisichafue manguo cuz sijui kufua so all these things that i've, I've ever that gone, I've went, gone through i turned to god at a very young age i said there's no way mimi naweza enda through these things najua kuna mtu na hata kama si wazazi wangu na wanaweza ni support sai ama wanisimamie wa, wa, nisiteseke na na huyu mama najua kuna mtu and I, i always just said najua kuna mtu so i started i was very churchy my mom is also very churchy So I went to church when I was a very young girl. I I was excellent in Sunday school. I read the Bible when I was a, a little kid. But then our family also had a lot of domestic violence, you know, in it. So school was an escape. You understand? School to me was an escape. I loved school. I hated closing days. <laughs> I hated closing days. I just loved being in school. I just wanted to be in school because I knew Naweza soma kitu hapa na nijitoe. Nijitoe kwa whatever is going on at home. Mm-hmm. Naweza soma kitu hapa na nijitoe. So uh, as I, as I continued to do that, I realized that at a very young age there was a time nilikuwa nimeshinda ki English. Nikapewa tag. Walikuwa wanapatiana anga watu yes. tag hapa yes. at best in English. Yes. So nikapewa tag in my school ilikuwa na viboko. It was a village school. So hiyo tag ikapotea siku moja nikapoteza ngai hiyo tag na walisema ati ukipoteza you know walimu yes. you will be in for it mm. so when i lost that tag that was the most stressful time in my life so i said hey i, I can't deal with this so i just turned to god na nikasema i need to find that tag i'm just going to close my eyes and i'm going to walk you need to lead me to that tag because that, that, that deep down i felt like I, i i have to find it and i wanted to find it and i channeled all my energy into finding that tag and i started walking and when i opened my eyes i saw the tag like ilikuwa kando ya barabara hivi kwa nyasi you understand na ilikuwa tag ya white i remember na kipino chini but ilikuwa kwa nyasi so by the time i was opening my eyes i saw it and i was just okay i was so happy that i found the tag and i'm not longer in trouble that i did not think about what just happened yeah. you understand so i just kept i just kept going but i had a battle with trusting my intuition because i couldn't believe that i say that ah probably ilikuwa tu hapo you know this is just a coincidence these things that you dismiss as coincidences, coincidences. so i dismissed that particular thing as a coincidence i went back to school gave back my nini tag my tag and everything was just okay so i've always had a struggle with my intuition nimekwanga tu na struggle like to trust my intuition because i disobeyed it so nini i trusted my intuition so much that i wanted to know what happens when i don't oh. <laughs> i've always trusted my intuition so much i've excluded myself from friendships in, even in campus i would tell my friend ona oh, achana na huyu Achana na huyu and she would think you are just yeah us. and then later on and then Something she would come happens. and tell me at eh kwani how did you know imagine this and this and even me i did not know i was just trusting my intuition so my intuition has always helped me it reached a point i wanted to know what happens when it doesn't maybe i'm just delusional maybe i'm just being crazy so i decided to test me not listening to my intuition one day apo serena <laughs> when i tested um Unajua nini Serena nyuma yes. Serena kuna park yeah. and I was in Stella Winja University yes. of Nairobi. Yeah. So there was a time I was nilizindikisha best yangu to GPO. Now I was supposed to come back. Every time ningezindikisha hiyo best yangu GPO I would always come back to UON through mbele ya Serena. I wouldn't pass inside. You understand? Because something just told me don't. 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 So every time I would listen. So that yes. one day time nikasema ah acha nipite nione kwani what will happen let me see if my intuition talks the truth or not yes. so i passed through hey when i was walking from the gate kulikuwa na watu wenye walikuwa wanapita na, na ile side ya mbele so by the time i was getting into the middle wale watu walikuwa shaenda na wale watu wenye nilikutana nao walikuwa shapita so it was just me in the middle and out of nowhere a guy just comes a chokora hey 
unaenda wapi so unajua akiniongelesha na huko mimi yeah. bado najaribu kukutani yes. nyuma yeah. so that i go back because i'm hapo ndo nilijiambia ati okay i've confirmed uh, the, the, it's happening yeah. yeah and when i saw that guy i just knew that okay it's happening i did not trust my intuition and now it's happening and it happened i got sexually assaulted in 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 in, in that park behind nini serena and when i got out of that place that was the beginning of my now being serious <laughs> that was the beginning of me being serious in my awakening because i i was sexually assaulted because i walked into it i'm the one who told myself that okay i will not listen to my intuition now let me go through this and to me that experience it was the sexual assault part has always been a very terrible experience to me but when i look at what happened when i was going through it it was me trying to actually figure out where i stand with myself and after then i will never disobey my intuition wow. i will never disobey my intuition and i always listen to it with the greatest you know i listen to my intuition so much so that is how i started now being serious but ever since i was a, a little kid you always were i always was so that was how i was living it's just that i was hated so much mimi i had so much hate even from my own sibling because of the way i was you know because of how much mouthy i was even my parents sometimes would become embarrassed of me because of just how how i would how different i was i, I would say things that and I, I i didn't know how to keep things to, inside to, yeah to myself and i would always you know warn people again i think that they were, they didn't want me to warn them that would get me into a lot of trouble with people even with my own family because people people don't like when you interfere with their energies in a way that is not aligned with them mm-hmm. and i think that is something that I, i've always i've always just felt the need to say to talk my mind to tell people that okay this and this and this is what is going mm-hmm. on and for the longest time it's only now that people are listening but for the longest time you've been talking yeah i've been talking and it it's been grabbing people the wrong way mimi hadi hizi vitu zinaongelelea tiktok sa hizi i used to talk about them on facebook for the longest time na napata likes zangu tatu after nimeandika hapo novel refu na nasonga tu mbele so when tiktok came yes. and by the way when tiktok came the first time i saw the app it looked like it was smiley before yeah. i did not pay attention it did not attract me anything i did not even want but when they changed the name to tiktok when i saw tiktok the first thing that ran into my mind was time it is time and then when i went to the app it was exactly what i was wishing to have because for the longest time I, I tried creating content on youtube but youtube is so long na mm-hmm. it requires a lot of equipment mm-hmm. but with tiktok it's just your phone so when i saw tiktok that was the beginning of it for me yeah yeah oh man mm-hmm. that's a deep story behind <laughs> it mm-hmm. how do you feel right now about when you look at yourself what, how do you feel about yourself eh, i feel <laughs> When I look at myself sometimes I feel because even me see ati nimejielewa hadi nikafika mwisho ya kujielewa. Sasa hizi ndio hata naona ni kama nimeanza sasa kujielewa. Hiyo time yote like mimi si kwa naona ni kama nimejielewa. And it took me moving out of an environment, it took me breaking off from certain relationships, it took me creating time to be with myself. You understand? And so right now when I look at everything the way it is happening yeah. I just feel so happy because it's time finally ah what when tunajuana wako hapa na tutapatana mtapatana si ndio imagine what when tunajuana even if you you say it in the beginning of this thing yes. that we've never talked no but we talked the first time and what oh, it was crazy <laughs> DNA epigenetics yes. so ndo nakwambia right now I'm just ready I'm ready for 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 life to unfold. To unfold. Yeah. And wow. I, I'm ready for it to keep unfolding. Yes. And I'm ready to see where we will go. I yeah. want us to to adventure the entire planet. Yeah, what's your vision for Africa? Person uh, vision for Africa is I Africa I want Africa to be the pioneers because they are on a literally speaking Africa is the cradle of mankind. All human beings started in Africa. It all began in Africa and it will all end in Africa. So what my dream for Africa is for Africans to just step into their power. All you need to do is step into your power. You have the power already. That's it. Just step, step into, into it. it and start knowing who your ancestors were yes. before yeah. mm. slavery and colonization. Mm-hmm. Know that. about the legends of Africa. Know that Mansa Musa 
was the richest man in Africa and the whole world and richest zenye Mansa Musa ali accumulate no man has ever been able to accumulate up to even Bill Gates no ajafika no man has ever reached the level of riches that Mansa Musa had and Mansa Musa was an astrologer alikuwa na follow astrology ni kama religion so na ndo nakwambia as above so below when you go with that path your success is guaranteed it's and guaranteed. everybody can be successful there is enough yes. space for everyone yeah There's enough space for everyone. People this. just need to believe that there is. There is. The planet is so huge, the universe is so big. Kuna places that hatujaenda. Mm. Hii maisha hata bado hatuja hatujajua ni bado tuna tuna we are still sorting relationships. We are still sorting. We haven't started sorting life issues. Yes, we are still sorting relationship issues. Ati wewe alifanya nini? Black people walifanya nini? White people walifanya nini? Bado tuko very at the bottom of the barrel at the bottom we've still not started moving now yes. towards knowing that oh mm. there could be other civilizations out there mm. there could be other spaces out there yeah what is mars about what is jupiter about what are there and these are the things that we How need to do we discover. get there <laughs> we will get there we'll get there we will get there yes. yeah. i think you are very in, like you you are intelligent if i wanted mm. to just start from somewhere mm-hmm. what two books should i read bas so <laughs> <laughs> ona there are so many books yes but umeuliza tu but let me give maybe a, a little bit more free. than no, that go on go on go on so if you want to study if you want to understand first of all the african history yeah just to get to know you know what is education doing here you know what what, what is the system the society the way colonial col- colonization where did it stem from africans who were they before colonization after colonization there's a book called the destruction of black civilization by chancellor williams mm-hmm. then we have a, a book called the stolen legacy and i think it's by marcus garvey yeah. the stolen legacy and then we have a uh, invention of women if you want to know about ancient africa before patriarchy oyeronke oyewumi invention of women then we have a book called the lost star i think it's by the lost star is by Ma- I think it's by Martin mm-hmm. Martin or something yeah. but it's the lost star is talking yeah. about astrology yes. of 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 Sirius it's mm-hmm. talking about Sirius unajua sasa hizi geographers will only teach you about the sun at the sun moja tu ndio iko hapo juu ina rotate peke yake but kuna Sirius the sun when you hear about the golden age golden age is when Sirius and the sun are in alignment with each other Oh, yeah. yeah, kuna sun nyingine, kuna another star that is revolving around the mm. earth revolves on its own axis. Yes. Earth revolves around the sun. The sun revolves around Sirius. Jesus. <laughs> Do we wind up? We, we wind up. up. Let's wind this thing up, man. <laughs> <Do you laughs> parting shot. My parting shot is as above, so below. <laughs> as as within, so, so without. Without. Nothing exists outside of you. No, that is not already, already inside. inside you. So trust that sh- Mungu alikupatia marking skin yako. Hakuna mtu akona access to that your marking scheme. Yeah. So tushtue, introduce tushtue. yourself to the world and tell the world that unajua mimi ni Vivian Tabu Okumu na nimekuja hapa kuwaonyesha Vivian Tabu Okumu venye ataishi. Na hakuna mtu mwingine amewaiishi venye naenda kuishi. Mjue. Period. Exactly. Hey. <laughs> you are so you uh, are so <laughs> Where can this people find you? <laughs> You find me if, if, if I am yeah if I haven't found you yet relax so imagine me nitakupata yeah some your mother will post me on her status and you will see me wow. your child will post me on their status and you will see me you will see me no need There's no, no need. need for you to go around looking, really looking for me I, I will find you and when it is time I will align with you nitakupata hata kama hutaki nikupate. Hey. Utapata tu ati mwalimu wako ameniweka kwa stage. Ah, oh yeah. My audience are gonna want the outfits though. Okay. Unajua watakupata. Yeah. But at least give us a plug for the cause I'm actually showing up here dressed by you. So, so uh, yeah. when ukikitaka nikushone, yes. Uh, personally na, na Shona by the way yeah. and I like creating like really unique stuff like is it, I don't like creating stuff that are like copied from other people yeah. ama whatever so if you are somebody who you have a birthday you just have an event and you unataka kujionyesha come through nitafute sio tupata na nitafute 
Sasa namba contact I've ever tried and that's when you know she means what she says. Okay, so imagine ni tafute tu utanipata because mm-hmm. the reason why I don't want to give contact not social handle or social handle yes. is swirinyar kano swiri with s w r no s w i r y just look for me swirinyar kano if you yeah, want something unique yeah. you'll find me They'll just find, find me nikushone kama unataka nguo yenye ita stop show Hey, nitafute hey, nitakushonea a lifestyle my people <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm, 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 We've yeah. learned a lot I'm, I'm also so glad that I was Man, here I'm so glad I met you finally face to face And Mimi pia nimetakanya ku commit by the it is mutual <laughs> it is mutual the type of respect you have for me is the exactly the type of respect I have for you you, you need to know it. that it is very mutual like I've been thinking about getting a show at Lingugis but i knew it was going to come when the time is right yeah. and it it did it just did. yeah so mimi Man, yeah. i'll always I go back it. to our first phone call it was awesome go 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 <laughs> bloom you're yeah. already blooming you're yeah. already living your life you yeah. don't even need me to tell you go <laughs> <laughs> you already you are me we are here yeah, we are here mimi ndio nafani jiambie lin go but then no, you go hmm? You also give yourself credit. No, I am. That yes. one I do. You are wow. doing a lot of things. I've shed tears because of this show. Yeah. Thanks. Because the stories that you tell, one thing that you don't know about Nini, you're giving when we talk about mainstream media, we are talking about the main bloodstream. Mainstream. And mainstream can be manipulated. Unajua blood yako inaweza manipulatiwa ikue infected hapo mpaka ikusaidie nimo. But then we have this mainstream media that are very authentic. And that is what we want. people who are telling real stories people who are not there to paint an illusion watu wakuje waone unajua kuna watu wengine wanadanganya tu mbele ya watu there nini you know illusion yeah illusions but then when you are somebody who is in the mainstream when you know when you are a celebrity know that you are in the mainstream uko kwa the main unajua ukiangalia the body i don't know whether this meeting will end but <laughs> unajua ukiangalia the body kuna aorta the main Unajua kuna heart yes. na kuna pulmonary artery kuna pulmonary vein kuna aorta kuna vena cava uko wapi if you are a celebrity know that you are in the mainstream that is helping people you understand the parts of the blood the blood vessels that you are in it's mainstream yeah. so be very accountable and be very authentic and i love it because you are authentic and you are accountable Appreciate and and it that. helps and it helps you tell stories the way they are whether what was kubali ama wakatai even the story iko and that is what mainstream should be about thank you yes. i'm in alignment <laughs> my people i'm in alignment stay woke go out mm. there man just study these things about us yes. i know that why we were acting huh we shouldn't even be acting like huh this is something that we should know already yes. this is something if we are living here in the soil we should know you get it yeah. but i always appreciate that man this has been a learning experience and i'm just happy i did not get to experience it alone <laughs> i got to experience it with thousands of you guys who if you get to watch this just just kumbuka this was meant for you if you don't get to watch it come 10 years later yes. that is when we'll be in alignment with the kind of conversation that was happening kila mtu kwa different time yes swiri yeah. nyar kano Thank you. We appreciate you. You are gorgeous. Queen, Thank you. go out there. You know, mm-hmm. don't forget if we ever need conversations for us to just tear things mm-hmm. apart, we are coming yeah. because this continent, this planet of ours, you know, we just mm-hmm. have to be the ones accountable yes. for the kind of changes yeah. that we want yeah. to see. You get yeah. it, yeah? Yeah, so the books, they'll be on the screen, guys. The titles, I want you to go I'll also pin uh, the titles of the books on the comment section so that we can start grabbing ourselves copies because to see at when you ma. I appreciate you all that has that have taken time just to sit with us through this conversation. Thank you to all our amazing supporters. the kind of community that we are building together i do not take that for granted and of course to our incredible team this would not have happened were we not here with our legendary camera person and director edwin ochieng our amazing assistant abigail and of course our incredible editor and graphics designer kelvin we do not take your support for granted thank you so much and if you want to share your story with me i'm a pia mini anza kusema you i'll find you <laughs> 
now. If you want to share your story with me, <laughs> this is my email. <laughs> my email is right there. Uh, send a summary of your story and who knows, uh, we could be speaking with you on our next episode of the Lean Gogi Show. Take good care of yourself. Even me, Acha ni wambia juna yangu na itangwa nyambura, I will start walking in alignment. Bantu. Uh, so, we naona na ikito ima hapa mutani ita nyambura wa gogi. But moving on. Thank you so much. Take good care of yourself and stay woke. The time is now. Bye-bye.